Okay, sorry about that. I think I knocked out for a minute again. Hey, give me one second. I'm going to pull up the slides. Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay, I think I'm where I need to be. Okay, so let's take a look at how to calculate the mean of this frequency distribution on the calculator. Okay, now from those hand, um, the hand calculation that we just figured up, we will need the midpoint. So in my calculator, I want to go back into my list. So I'm going to hit stat. And for edit, I'm going to hit enter. And for list one, I'm going to put in those midpoints. So I'm going to put in 99.5. One forty nine point five, one ninety nine point five, two forty nine point five, and two ninety nine point five. Okay, so in order to calculate the mean of a frequency distribution using your calculator you must calculate the midpoints. So I'm going to put those midpoints in as list one. Next, I'm going to go over to list two, and I'm going to put in the frequency. So 11, 24, 10, 3, and 2. All right, so in list one, we have our midpoints. List two, we have our frequencies. In order to calculate the mean, I'm going to go back to the home screen, which is second in mode. This time I want to hit stat. So I'm not going back into the list functions. I'm going into the stat function. I want to scroll over to calculate. We want to calculate the one variable statistics. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, we want to calculate the one variable statistics from the list one and list two. So I have to make sure that I tell my calculator I'm using list one and list two. So I'm going to hit second and one, which is list one, comma, second and the number two, which is list two. And once I hit enter, it gives me the one variable statistics. Remember that X bar is the mean. So the mean is 160.5, which is what we calculated. The summation of X is 8,025. So if you check that back with your hand results, I believe this gave us the summation for F times X, which is 80.25. You also see X squared. This X squared value is actually using to what the computer uses to calculate the mean. Right? In order to find X squared, they simply take all of the X values. Excuse me. They take all of the F of X values. Square those and add them together. 
The S of X that you see, this is the standard deviation. Now there is a problem uh, further along where you're given a frequency distribution and you're asked to find the standard deviation instead of the mean. If that's the case, you would use the same procedure. You would find the midpoint for every class. Then in your calculator, you would set up L1 as the midpoint, L2 as your frequency values. You would calculate the one variable statistics. And this S of X is the standard deviation. This funny looking circle that you see, that sigma, and that's the variance. Okay, we're going to talk about standard deviation and variance a little later. You also give an N, N is 50, so that was our adding up all of our frequency values. You're giving the minimum. You're giving Q1, which is the first quartile. We'll talk about that shortly. Um, you're giving the median, which is that middle value, once you arrange all your data values. You're giving Q3, which is the third quartile. You're giving the max. Okay, and those are all of the features. But here, the only thing we are interested in is the mean. Okay, which is 160.5. Okay, so any questions on cal calculating the mean of a frequency distribution? Okay. All right, next we'll talk about a weighted mean. And for a weighted mean, okay, a weighted mean is when you have different data values that are assigned different weights, and that's called a weighted mean. When you calculate a GPA, you calculate a GPA by using this weighted mean. It says that X bar, which again is the mean, that's equal to the summation of W times X where W is your weight and X is your data value divided by W, excuse me, divided by the summation of W, which would be adding up all of your weights. All right, we're gonna take a look at how a GPA is calculated. So it says in our first semester, of college, a student of the author took courses, her final grades, along with the number of credits for each course um, were an A. And keep in mind that this was from a three credit hour course. She had an A in a four credit hour course, a B in a three credit hour course, a C in a three credit hour course, and she had an F in a one credit hour course. For the grading system that her school assigns, an A is worth four, a B is worth three, a C is worth two, a D is worth one quality point, and then an F is worth no quality points. So let's compute her grade point average. All right, so I'm going to go back to the document camera. So here were her grades she had okay, so I'm going to put grades in one column and credits in another column 
right? So she had an A, and it was a three credit hour course. She had another A, it was in a four credit hour course. She had a B, and that was in a three credit hour course. She had a C, which was in a three credit hour course. And she had an F, which was a in a one credit hour course. Okay. So now notice that each one of my grades is weighted a little bit differently. So an A is equal to four. A B is equal to three quality points. A C is two and a one is zero. All right, so this is our W and this is our X. All right, so here again, I'm gonna make oops, another column. So in this column, we want, and our formula says W times X. So once we find all our W times X values, we can sum those all together. And he, here we would have the summation of W times X. All right, so I'm gonna multiply these things together. So four times three, is 12, four times four is 16, three times three is nine, two times three is six, and excuse me, an F is worth zero quality points. So that should be a zero instead of a one. So for our last W times X value, we have zero times one, which is zero. All right, so we have 12, 16, nine, six, and zero. So in order to find the summation of W times X, we're gonna add up all of these values. So if we add, 12 plus 16 plus 9 plus 6, we have a total of 43. Okay, the next thing we also need is summation of W. So just as in the previous section, when we add up all of our frequencies, here we're going to add up all the credit hours. So three plus four plus three plus three plus one, I believe that gives us 14 credit hours. All right, so here is our GPA calculation. It's equal to the summation of W times X divided by the summation of W so the summation of W times X is 43 divided by the summation of W, which is 14. And when you divide 43 by 14, we have a GPA of 3.07. All right, so that's a GPA of 3.07. Okay, we can also do the same, perform the same calculation in our calculator. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to go back to our home screen. Excuse me, I'm going to go back to the share my screen.
Okay. All right, so I have up the calculator. And I want to go back into my list. So I'm going to hit list. I'm going to hit edit. And I want to edit list one. And I want to edit list two. Now, since I have value stored for list one and for list two, I'm going to clear those out. I'm going to go to the very top. I'm going to hit second and enter. I'm going to put in those values. Let's see, three, one, four, four, three, two, zero, three. Four, three, three, and a one. I'm going to go back to my home screen. Okay, one variable statistics. All right, L1 and L2, and notice my mean, which is my GPA is 3.07. Okay, which is the same thing we calculated by hand. All right, any questions about this example. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the document camera for just one second. document camera and this is one thing that I'm noticing if you have a TI-84 it looks a little bit different in that one variable statistics setup okay. so I'm going to just basically repeat the process I'm going to go into stat and edit and I'm going to clear out everything in those lists And I'm going to enter in the grades four, four, three, two, zero. I'm going to put in the credits three, four, three, three, and one. I'm going to go back to my home screen. I'm going to go to stat, calculate one variable statistics. Oops, I did that too fast. I'm going to go back to one variable statistics. And then notice how I entered this. Okay, can you see it? For list one, for list, I put in list one. For frequency list, I put in list two. So I didn't use that L1 comma L2. All right, I put in list as list one. Frequency list was list two, and if you go to calculate, and I have the mean, 3.07. So for this example and that previous frequency distribution mean example, if you have a TI-84, when you use the one variable statistics, okay, I'm realizing that my setup is different. Okay, I can't actually enter commas. In my list, I would put list one, and in my frequency list, I would put list two. Okay. 
All right. Okay, I'm going to go back to the shared screen. And the last thing we'll talk about is a standard deviation. And a standard deviation for a sample set of values is denoted by S. S stands for the sample standard deviation, st excuse me, the sample standard deviation. This funny looking circle, that's sigma, and sigma is for the population standard deviation. And here's the formula to calculate the standard deviation. S is equal to the square root of the summation of X minus X bar quantity squared. So first you would find your mean, you would take each value, subtract it from the mean, you would square that quantity. You would add up all of those values, you would divide by n minus one, and you would take the square root. All right, so let's take a look at an example that uses standard deviation. I got to get my windows to get over here. Okay, I'm going to bring back up the calculator. And problem number 14 deals with the standard deviation. So notice that I'm given a data set for the top 10 annual salaries and millions of dollars of TV personalities. We're asked to find the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. So I'm going to take this data and I'm going to put it into list one. So in order to enter the data into our list, I'm going to press stat. And edit is already highlighted, so I'm going to hit one. I'm going to clear out list one. So I'm going to go to the very top. I'm going to hit clear and enter. And I'll put in the data values. 39, 15, 14.7, and 13.8. All right, so we have in the 10 top salaries. Now, we didn't quite talk about a formula for a range, but in order to find a range of any data set, you would take the largest value minus the smallest value. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. So I'm going to hit second and mode, which is quit. I'm going to take the largest value in the data set. So I'm going to use a calculator to find it. So I'm going to go back into list. So that's second and stat, which is list. I want to scroll over to math. I want the maximum value for list one minus the minimum value for list one. So I'm going to go back in the list. We 
on the minimum value for list one. And we have our range, which is 25.2. In order to find the variance, now here's the relationship between the standard deviation and the variance. The standard deviation is S. The sample variance is S squared. So if you take the variance and take its square root, that would give you the standard deviation. If you're given the standard deviation and you and you want to find the sample variance, you would simply take the standard deviation and square it. But as far as the calculator is concerned, we have a variance function. So again, I'm going to go within list. I want to scroll over to math. And my very last option is variance. And we want to find the variance of list one. So we're going to put list one in our variance function. And we have 106.03. Next, we're asked to find the standard deviation. So again, I'm going to go into the list. I want to scroll over to operations. Excuse me, I want to scroll over to math. The standard deviation is my seventh function. We want to find the standard deviation of list one. And we have the standard deviation is 10.3 once we round. Now, as far as the standard deviation is concerned, what the standard deviation measures is it measures the deviations from the mean. And when I say deviation, that's how far away is a particular value from the mean. The standard deviation is a good estimate, estimator if you have a sample, a large enough sample, and if that sample is taken from a random sample. Notice that of all the TV personalities, and there's hundreds of thousands of TV personalities, 10 out of hundreds of thousands does not represent the whole population. So because of that fact, the standard deviation and the variance results that we have, they don't represent the whole population. The sample variance and the sample standard deviation are good estimators if the data set represents the entire population. All right, so I think um, at this point we'll kind of stop, and once we meet again next Wednesday, we'll pick up and finish Chapter 3. I'm going to go back to the document camera. Okay, because in this document camera, I can actually see all of the chats. All right, are there any questions about uh, anything we went through today or anything to this point in the course? Okay, so is everybody okay with everything? Um, when we meet um, again next Wednesday, make sure you have your calculator. I'm sorry about all the technical uh, difficulties this morning, so hopefully we won't have those again. All right, so I am recording this lecture, so I'll make it available sometime uh, this afternoon. But if no further questions, see everyone on next Wednesday.